Hello and welcome. This is Alchemist X, and this is going to be a review of the unit Little Ouroboros. Admittedly, an incomplete review given that um, her enlightenment is coming soon. But I think that there's a, more to talk about in than in a usual review because she is a unique unit. But before we get to that, I want to talk about some news because big, big update. Gate 6 is finally here, and then not only that, we're also getting the Sprite Trio Memento. Which, that's not really relevant to this video, but that is a big deal in terms of potential things that people are saving for. And we will talk about that more tomorrow. But no, the big, big update, though, is Gate 6 is just coming right out the gate. We knew it was coming this month, um, as of a few days ago, but it's now confirmed that it's coming in the update. And we are getting... Five units where Lil Ouroboros is one of them. So, um, if you don't know already, Gate 6 allows you to equip a second memento at a stat penalty. And then it also is a big bump in HP. Like, let's let's take a look uh, using, yeah. So we're seeing like 970, 850, 990. Um, and then I believe that's a, you know, it's like a modifier type value. Kind of like, you know, when you equip a gear then it says HP plus 700 and the amount that it equipped. It, that, that it increases depends on the character because different classes have different modifiers for how much they get from a stat. It's, you know, it's I'm not super complicated, but it's a little more complicated than the value that you're given on its face. So, so a lot of HP. And then that means that, you know, it's going to be a very important stat moving forward because I imagine that if you think that some things hit like a truck already, they're going to hit like a super truck. Uh, but yeah, so that that is the, you know, the big kind of housekeeping thing as far as gate six is here. Brace yourselves. Going to have to start gathering bubbles, start farming that new uh, greeds redemption. No idea how hard the advanced stage is going to be on that, but hopefully not too bad. And then also there's going to be uh, another hell level for little Ouroboros. So yeah, before we get into all that... I think the, the first thing that we should address is how do I get Lil Ouroboros? Because you're not going to get her in a summon. Uh, it's not the easiest thing in the world, but if you've got uh, up-to-date units for today, you should be totally fine. So let's talk about that next. All right, so let's go into how you find Lil Ouroboros. So there is a trial section, and the Shadow Plane Karma is a place of really big hell levels and there are currently two characters you can get, Waginau and Lil Ouroboros. I also think Waginau is a really good character, but he doesn't have enlightenment, and that's a subject for another day. So it is called Little Serpent Princess, and there are two versions, uh, Regular and the Extreme Hell. To be honest, uh, given today's like state of units, they're not that much different from each other. The Extreme Hell is slightly more annoying, but um, if, you can, if you can beat the regular one, you should be fine. And you have to beat the regular one to unlock the Extreme Hell. And you will need to play this level quite a few times. So, if you have more time than things to do in Alchemist Code today, then here's something that could take up your day. Although you might want to take breaks in between just for the sake of your sanity. So I want to discuss a few things. Because if you want to get her and get her raised up to 85, you I believe you get her as a result of beating it. And then for doing the milestones, that's where you're going to find the shards to raise her. I don't recommend using dark shards on her. You could if you wanted to reduce the amount of time you would spend um, getting the milestones, but I don't think that's a good trade-off. I think that's a bad use of your dark shards. Save those for limited summon units. So it's things like beat with, um, you know, no items or three items, um, and then... You want to kill the last foe with the protagonist units, so it's the, the female units in the regular level and then male units in the extreme hell, and that is something you kind of have to go out of your way to do. Uh, the rest of them aren't too bad. Um, pretty, pretty much milestones you'd expect. Um, the thing about it is, though, that um, there is a structure to how it works because it's a long, big level. 
So the game isn't expecting you to beat it in the same way that you would beat most other maps. So you actually get three teams. So what happens is you start with your first team and you go and then if your team is wiped out, then um, your new team will spawn at like the spawn point and they'll continue the battle from there. So when you're considering how to beat the level, and especially considering the protagonist units, uh, there's two ways to, to do it. You could have a team that is um, capable of suiciding, so to speak. Maybe a unit like Leonia or something, um, or Noin. Wait, actually, I don't, I don't think Noin can hit himself. Never mind, bad example. Um, Noin can kill the rest of your team really easily, but then he'd have to get killed by Laura Boros. Um, and then you spawn your secondary or third team that has the protagonist unit in it once a little Ouroboros is already weakened. Uh, don't bring counter characters when you're trying to control how much health little Ouroboros has. Like, Zeng Yi can destroy this level, but he can accidentally kill little Ouroboros too. So be wary of that when that matters. When it doesn't matter, counter all you want because there's lots of enemies. Um, there's one unit I like in particular for this level. You can see him at the top and that unit is Rado. Um, I'll showcase uh, exactly why in a moment here, um, but you're going to need to do this level a lot because when we look at the milestones, you've got there's five different protagonist units across the two levels, and then there's also uh, an all-female unit clear as well, and then there's kill all foes and then keep the undead familiar alive, and that guy's a jerk. So yeah, ton you'll have to just get get used to this level. Eventually, you'll memorize it. There's a couple of things. Um, for the most part, if you've got level 95 units, it's very straightforward. The only thing is there are some raddies with damage types, and you need to kill them before they do a big damage res buff. Otherwise, it, it becomes kind of unplayable. Uh, so you just need to know where they spawn, and then, then you're good. But as far as um, that goes... Let me just show you why Rado is one of my favorite characters uh, to do this level. Alright, here we are at the end of the Extreme Hell level, and I want to showcase why I like Rado so much. So the, the basic premise is he's got Clever Charge and then the basic Sage abilities. So he's got Magic and Missile, and I had him kill as many enemies as possible, so he's kind of kill-stealing. But yeah, 251 Agility, 3500 M Attack, 1700 Dex. Uh, with his Scaling, he's not going to get amazing damage. But he's very hard to kill, he's crazy fast now, and the damage that he puts out is good enough that uh, he's just really good at clearing this map. Like, they're bye-bye Tomamo, almost goodbye Edwin, almost called him Tomas. He was released at the same time as Tomas, so sometimes I get them mixed up because they're both units I don't use. And then, yeah, goodbye that guy. So yeah, he just... He's really good at this map. The only thing you have to be wary of is the CC. Like, he's going to get death sentence here, and he almost died from it, but then I finished the map before that became an issue. Because, um, yeah, you notice she's got, like, almost 50k HP, but compared to some of the content that we've had, uh, especially geared towards 95 units, this level's really not that bad. Like, this team was not properly geared out. I had forgot to put the HP regen on Rado, and I don't even know what Lofia's got. I don't change her gear much, but she's probably got an empty slot. I don't change Letitia's much either. Uh, I brought an Ambrosia to get M attack even higher. There is no penalty for using mercenaries, so go ahead and use them as much as you can. I don't know if you saw there, the reactive is a pain for magic users, but Soul can cast from far enough away. Minerva is another one who might be able to do that. And then if you're using a Magic Meister, their skills aren't technically magic, so the Requiem Ray or whatever it's called, that one won't proc the reactive. So the, that's the reason I really like Rado. It's the combination of consistent damage, uh, very high speed with a lot of kills, and then, um, yeah, he's just really hard to kill. There's a lot of other units you could use if you don't have the units for this setup. Like, um... You could do a Clever Charge Minerva, a Cheryl, if you want to go light. Um, if you want to go wind, Wilhelm is another good option. Although, everything he does is magic, so be wary that you'd have to keep him constantly veiled. But, I, I definitely recommend Snowball characters, though, for this map. For, for this reason. Because, like, Rado is not considered a great unit nowadays. Um, just because usually it takes him too long to get the momentum built. But this level, like... 
he can really build that momentum. So any character you can use that way, I would go for it. Like, ah, oh, look at that. His speed was almost his undoing there with that death sentence. Um, my Letitia still had one, one poison pill left, but it doesn't matter because the map's over. So yeah, that's it. I did it because I needed the pieces for the Edgar job equipment. But I just wanted to showcase like just how, you know, viable that was. That was a, a half-hearted <laughs> effort at it and it still was fine. It wouldn't have gotten the protagonist clears and all that, but... So yeah, let's move on to uh, Little Ouroboros as a unit. Alright, so here is Little Ouroboros, and this is what she looks like after having um, all of the milestones. So I got all the shards to get her to 85, and I got her special gear, and once the update happens, there's going to be another even harder map to take care of her enlightenment. So her stats might not look super impressive right now, but that's going to change in the future. But let me tell you about the main selling point of Little Ouroboros. The, the reason why you would want to go to all of that trouble. And it is a lot of trouble. And it's going to have even more trouble added next week. But um, I think that it's worth it. And this is why. When we look at her mementos, I've got Orion equipped on her. Little Ouroboros units from Greed Dyke. Little Ouroboros and Orion in the group skill. It's not 100% but the overwhelming majority of group skills and mementos she can use. So you can throw all kinds of crazy things on her, give her access to um, abilities that she wouldn't normally be able to have. Like, for example, her, her Continental Observer job has a map-wide jump attack. Whoops, it's in the perception. So light jump attack to all enemy units. So... You could give her Catanova's VCR, for example, and give her the jump charge up. And then you could also throw the Orion VCR in her and give her the auto jewel charge. There's all She can use combinations of VCRs and memento abilities that would normally be impossible. Like, I wonder if she... Oh, I guess she doesn't really use P-Attack, but... Uh, oh, she could use the Zane charge up on his VCR to get doubled M-Attack. That kind of thing. Like, you can really customize how you interact with the mementos and the VCRs. And then once she has the stats to back that up, that's going to help her a lot. Like, I don't know if she'll ever be a godly damage unit, but think of her more as like a support slash utility unit. And, you know, the sky is the limit, or I guess the memento group skill and VCR is the limit, but, you know. Yeah, the point is that there's a lot that she can do. Now, what are her actual abilities? Like, what can she do? On Continental Observer, it's largely a mix of different damage types and elements. So with her current stats, it's not going to be too potent. But it, at the very least, is interesting. And now you might be able to... If you want to do something specific with her, like boost a damage type, you know, there's a lot of mementos and gears that you could do to change it. I don't know if I would chase after that, at least at the moment. I think that I'm going to need to do a part two to this video post enlightenment. Like once I've gotten her all decked out, um, it might have to wait until after the bubbles are a little less scarce because I don't know if I'm, I, even if I clear the map right away, I don't know if I want to get her to gate six because that's going to be a very precious resource, uh, at least at first. But yeah, anyway, that aside, if you want to use her right now though, then a gazer is the job for you. Uh, with the gear that she can use, um, you can get some decent stats on her. And I think it's a light boosting attack. Or not attack, it boosts light attacks. Um, makes them strong versus dark. So you can run her with light units, but the main selling point is on the main kit of the Abyss Gazer job. Uh, I will showcase this in just a moment, but I'd like to describe it first. So this move, Light and Hell, this is the move that Gate 5 is going to impact. Renders dark attacks of ally units strong versus light for three turns. So this is big if you're fighting light units. Um, I made use of this in the light tower to take out some dudes with Bashini and with Noin here and there. It is great. Um, just You could throw it on units that are just damage machines like Noin, Zahara, Bashini, Zengi, etc. Wonderful. That alone could slot her into a team, for my opinion. But then the other fun part is the Abyss Wall. This is a very, very nice barrier. Uh, creates a barrier, reduces a certain amount of damage. I forget how much, but 
it's decent for three turns. And then even if the barrier gets broken for three turns, you'll have the barrier. So it'll, it'll keep coming back. So damage reduction, something dark units can often use. She's got that covered. And then she doesn't have amazing options for the sub. Can, if you're considering her as a support unit, she can do some, a little bit of CC as far as buff removal. She's got some HP restoration. I don't think her M attack can really back that up. You could boost her healing via gears. And then she's got a um, CT raising and CT nullification. Um, but otherwise, like if you if you like won't need something else to do with her and you're running like a Letitia comp, then you, you might be able to just throw basic sorcery on her. That's what I've done in this case, although it's mostly she's just there for the shield and the damage boost. But yeah, that is um, that is her in a nutshell, and it's only going to get better from here. So yeah, let's uh, let's take her and some dark units into a battle with some light units and see exactly what she can do with those skills. All right, here we are in the middle of the battle. Uh, I wanted to spare some of the setup, but just basic premise is I got Levi's leader skill for the slash and all attack. And then I've brought Natalie here to do some setup as well for boosting slash because you can combine stat buffs and damage type mods and then exploit mods. So we're going to combine all of those and then try to get a big nuke off onto, um, onto Bashini. I think that little Ouroboros might have been too fast there. Oh yeah, there's that shield going. See it broke and then the next time he gets a turn it is going to just regen. A pretty good shield, right? He only took like double digit damage. And there it goes again. Okay, let me make sure it's for three turns. So yeah, let's get Light and Hill on him now. Then have Levi run into this corner and be awkward. And there comes the shield again. So you got three turns of regen. So just, just basically a flat damage reduction. It is good times. All right, let's have this boy charge up. And then we got one more step before it's nuking time. So then uh, the memento ability that comes from Natalie, the Scarlet Mirror vaccine, is pretty sweet as well. So we just want to stack that buff as well. So now he's got Slash Mod up, and he's got the Light Exploit up. So his normal attack is going to do 18k damage when we compare it to like the 16k there. So, But um, he's only getting the Slash Mod and the P Attack Mod because it has to be a Dark Elemented attack in order to get the little Ouroboros buff. Fortunately, Bashini's got plenty of those. So... We have got 68,000 damage, assuming that it doesn't crit. Uh, let's see if we get any crits on this. Yeah, wow. We got quite a few crits. Uh, yeah, that is that is the power of little Ouroboros buff. Well, and Natalie's, where credit is due. So as far as taking a dark team into battle versus light teams, she can be really, really awesome. Especially if there's just like this one big bad enemy that you need to take out and you need to take them out fast, then she can really help you do that. Because there's not a lot of options for light exploit, so you got to take them where you can. So yeah, that is it for now. We will revisit her again in the future. But for now, I will say uh, if you haven't done the level, do it. Have fun. Good luck. Be patient. Eventually you'll have it done and you can breathe a big sigh of relief. And until then, I will see you guys in the weekly update where Gate 6 is coming. And yeah, I will see you guys next time.